Man your battle stations because the sports generals are on patrol. Welcome to today's episode. We have got a jam-packed weekend of sports up ahead because tonight the Brooklyn Nets are hosting the Milwaukee Bucks. So that means KD versus Giannis. And Kyrie's allowed to play because, you know, Brooklyn and the mayor of New York decide to lift the vaccine mandate. And then you have the two-night WrestleMania event, which they're advertising as the most stupendous WrestleMania ever. I beg to differ on that one. And then, of course, we have the final four. So, yeah, talk to talk about action-packed. Yeah, plenty to watch this weekend, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, such a DVRs. Um, has somebody recorded for you? It's going to be an action-packed weekend for sure. I am definitely setting my DVR. Um, but first, the NFL machine just never stops. Like we said a couple of weeks on the show, Brian, it's like New York. It's the league that never sleeps. Yeah, 100%. Um, a lot has happened in the past couple of weeks. Um, the NFL looks a lot different now than it did, you know, even in the beginning of February. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's been a lot of moves, a lot of free agent uh, rumors flying around there still. A couple of people still left to be signed. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how things shake out leading up to the draft. And yeah, it's a I, lot of, not only is a lot of co- uh, a lot of player movement, but it's a lot of coaching changes that's going on also. Uh, some big coaching changes going yeah. on. You mean like the one, like the piece of NFL news that dropped yesterday involving Bruce Arians, that type of news? Yeah, that's that was a yeah, scratcher. That was big <laughs> news yesterday. That kind of came out of nowhere, huh? Yeah. So how how much do you think this has to do with Tom Brady or how little? I think it had if I had to put a percentage on it in terms of how much it involved Tom Brady, I would say 60%. I would say 1000%. Um it, it was no secret that they had a kind of a frosty relationship um and when Brady decided to come back it seemed like Arias was okay with it, but part of me want to say that it was forced to welcome him and say, oh, I'm so thankful for him coming back. When we all know that they used to have blow ups and practices, um, they had disagreements on um, the speed of the offense or the flow of the offense. And it just seemed like it's just a peculiar time for him now to say he woke up and decided to go in a different direction. So I don't know. It's, it's a lot of conspiracy. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just thinking about that. And I heard this same type of thing from various members of the media on other channels that aren't as good as this channel. <laughs> anyway, but that it this is a really curious time for a head coach in this particular case to retire. Like, You would think something like this would happen closer to training camp or closer to when the season starts. So I would totally agree that if I had to like pick a word or a phrase to describe it, it would be head scratcher. Yeah, it's definitely surprising to me. Um, We know Arians has had like some health scares in the past. So I feel like if it was really like a health issue, like he could have stepped away a long time ago for that. You know what I mean? Like when one of these, you know, instances happened and he never has indicated that he had any inclination of even not coaching again. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, it's like, Oh, well, you know, I'm getting old and my health is up there and I think we move into the front office. You know, it, it's real questionable timing. Um, I mean, it's one of those situations where like, unless you're really on the inside, like we're never really going to know. Um, but I, I'm somewhere between Josh's 60% and uh, Jason's 1,000%. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, I think that uh, Tom Brady had a lot to do with it. We'll put it that way. Um, I, well, at least Todd Bowles stepping in. I think Tom Brady had a lot to do with that. Um, more so Todd Bowles stepping in than Arian stepping out, if that makes sense. Yeah. You yeah. know, I wonder about that, though, because I wouldn't – what type of coach would you say Belichick is? Would you say he's more of a 
defensive minded coach or would you say he's more of an offensive minded coach? No, he's defensive minded. He's you know, he built up his cash out when he's with the New York Giants. Uh, been defense coordinator, winning two titles with uh, Bill Parcell. So um, I would say that's just in his DNA, his defense first, um, everything else second. He actually would let Josh uh, run the offense um, mm-hmm. and wouldn't even interfere with it. So I, I, I would say more of a defensive-minded coach for sure. I would agree with that. I think he's such a good coach that, like, he can adjust, you know, like based off of his personnel. Um, so I think like at times he can be offensive minded, like when he had Randy Moss and some of those other, you know, big targets, like he, he was really offensive minded then, you know, he really opened things up, but when he's, you know, playing things a little closer to the vest with a guy like Mac Jones, who's a young QB, um, then yeah, he's definitely way more defensive, you know? So he's a coach that kind of does a little bit of both, but I agree with Jason. He's defensive minded. That's where he's really made his money. That's where he got his fame and notoriety. Um, and I mean, arguably one of the biggest plays of his career is the the interception, you know, the call on that defensive set there. Um, he had that read like a book, you know. Oh, you're talking about in Super Bowl 49 with the Seahawks. Yeah, everybody in their in their brother thought that Marshawn was gonna get the ball, but uh, yeah. Belichick, you know, he knew he he had seen something and you know on film watching those guys, he knew that that play was potentially coming and he made the right defensive adjustment on the fly without calling a timeout, um, which just showed amazing composure. So yeah, defense is really where he's done some things that like will blow you away in terms of like his defensive genius. But offense, he's he's you know nothing to shake stick at offensively either, right. So the reason I ask that is because, like, we know Todd Bowles is going to be a defensive-minded coach. So I wasn't sure, like, if that would work with Brady because, you know, Brady is always thinking and scheming, like, new offensive plays. So I wasn't sure, like, if you thought that dynamic would be, like, I don't want to say awkward, but I can't think of a better word. Uh, you know what I'm trying to – you get what I'm trying to get at? hmm yeah, like- You know, it's, it's – I would say Belichick, I believe that over the times um, he's adapted. And just same thing with Nick Saban. We talked about this um, a few shows ago. They are able to adapt. And when they adapt, that means sometimes, hey, I may not – make the right decisions on offense because that's not my you know that's not my strong suit but let me give this person more room to do their magic and if you hear the hearing or you've heard the saying that Belichick always eliminates the best player on the opposing team and that comes from that that DNA of uh, being a defensive minded coach right so I think that he is open in you know, he, he's adapted to letting offensive coaches coach and let me coach unless I have to step in and oversee. Right. But that's the interesting now is, uh, you know, there's rumors that he might be calling the offensive plays this year. So he's mm-hmm. he's interested in getting more involved on that side of things. So, yeah, it makes you wonder where his faith is on the offensive staff. You know, it, it makes me think that he's uh, – not so trustworthy of those those guys to do it on their own. No offensive yeah. coordinator, no defensive coordinator. That's kind of weird, <laughs> but well, yeah. that's I what he's doing. They, well, I thought they had rehired Matt Patricia to be the defensive coordinator. They have no name for the – literally, <laughs> there's no offensive coordinator or no defensive coordinator. That's, yeah, he's that's got some kind of weird wonky title yeah. that New England created. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a different – it's a different – coaching structure with Belichick there. That's for sure. He does things his own way. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just wasn't sure if the dynamic between Brady and Bowles would work based, but based on what you guys are saying of how Belichick was more of a defensive minded coach, you think it sounds like you think that the transition is going to be fine. Hey, Belichick, I mean, Belichick, (laughs) Tom Brady works with anybody. Mm-hmm. He, uh, we heard the saying, he is the system. So, um, I, Todd Bowles is going to work with defense. 
Ty Bowles don't even attempt to act like he is an offensive-minded guy. He lets mm-hmm. them coach, even when he's with the Jets. Hey, that's your, that's your suit. You take care of that. I'll take care of the defense. But I think this is going to be a perfect marriage for them because now you don't have the, the power struggle of – um, should should we air the ball out or should we just do some five yard slants or whatever the case may be? Um, Ty Bowles, I believe, is going to let Brady do Brady and he'll do him. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, it, it's been a while since we've seen Bowles as a head coach. You know, um, obviously the time with the Jets weren't great, but he's never had a guy like Tom Brady. You know. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I don't think it's necessarily fair for people who are saying like, you know, Bowles has never shown that he could do it offensively and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. I think Jason's right is, is that Bowles is humble enough to say, you know what, I'll I'll let somebody else run that unit, mm-hmm. but but I don't think that the criticism of his like his past record with the Jets is fair, just because they've never had a, a, a solid quarterback situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to do much better than he did um, in the past. But the game has changed a lot since then, too, you know, in in the past, you know, six, seven years. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, But I I think that because of the fractures between Brady and uh, Arians, that this this situation between him and Bowles is just better by by it being normal. (laughs) If that makes you think it's better by default then. Yeah, essentially. Gotcha. Yeah. That makes sense. And I feel like Tampa Bay is going to have that division locked up by probably Mm. Thanksgiving because Carolina, who knows how long Matt Rule is going to be their head coach. We, they tried to go after Deshaun Watson and failed. So who knows what they're going to do at quarterback because clearly they don't believe in Sam Darnold. New Orleans, yeah, I like what they they did by keep re-signing Jameis Winston. Dennis Allen, I think, was the right head coaching decision for them, but I don't see them really being too much. And they of got a the fan. Red Rocket, didn't they? They they got the Red Rocket. Yes, <laughs> they did. Sign the Red Rocket. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's right. How do you, how you feel like uh, knowing Baker Mayfield, knowing that the Red Rocket got a job before he did? You know, yeah. <laughs> that's it's, awesome. it's quite humbling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> puts things in perspective for that young man. Yeah, but like, it shouldn't be a problem. Tampa Bay's the best team in that division by two miles, at least. I would say. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you on that. Except- sure. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason that Brady, you know, decided he wanted to come back was he he realized that none of these quarterback moves were going to happen because there was the rumors of these teams in that division getting good quarterbacks and they. They didn't, you know. Let me ask you guys this question. Did you hear the rumor about Tom Brady potentially going or forcing a trade to the Miami Dolphins? I that heard was it. out there. Yeah, that was, that was I cool. heard it. It never made any sense to me. Uh, as soon as Brady, you know, announced he was coming back, he immediately started recruiting free agents to come to Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. And he he's not going to be spending his time doing that if he's trying to force a trade to Miami. Right. So to me, that was that was just kind of one of those rumors that got floated out there and people ran with. But I never really took it seriously, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I also heard the rumor that part of the reason he retired in the first place was to try and force a trade from S- Tampa Bay to San Francisco. So, mm-hmm. you know. I feel like there's always going to be some type of rumor with Tom Brady, no matter what, because people just want to make a story about him. Cause let's face it. Like B Ward said, he's the goat. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, LeBron, when, whenever he's getting near his decision time, you know, you hear all the teams and cities that are floated out there and, all the rumors that get thrown around and and then you realize how none of them really had any smoke to begin with. And Bruce uh-huh. Arians probably was just looking at the rumors. Like, I hope this is true. And then when mm-hmm. he found out it wasn't true, right. he woke up one day and said, I want to step away from the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how, how it shook out, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if Brady was ever really planning on going anywhere else to be honest. So. Yeah. Yeah. I- 
people are saying like, oh, Tampa Bay lost to the Rams because of a few coaching decisions and whatnot last season. I don't think so. I just think the Rams were the better team in that game. Yeah, I agree with you there, Josh. I think it, it was just a, they were the better team that night. Um, I think that, you know, you said it earlier, this division is it's soft, you know. So for a guy like Brady who's getting up there in age, like the decision to come back is a lot easier when you know that, you know, you're not going up against these, you know, great quarterbacks like guys in the AFC are doing. You know, he's, yeah. he's got, he thinks that he's got an easy path to the Super Bowl. You know, he doesn't have to battle up against all the, you know, the hot young quarterbacks of the AFC. Um, so. Yeah. it, And that totally makes sense. Cause think about it. Like the only teams Brady potentially has to get through in the NFC are the Rams. Cause they're not going anywhere. They're the defense. They're the defending Super Bowl champions, San Francisco. Cause it, at this point, it doesn't look like, Anybody's going to make the trade for Jimmy G. So, right. And oh, then, <laughs> yeah. And then we'll see what Dallas is. I, I'm off. I'm not crazy about the Cowboys in general, but mm-hmm. this season, I just think it's not going to go well for them. Yeah. That's Memphis- one of the other reasons the Miami. The Miami rumor didn't make sense to me too, is because you know why would he want to jump to the AFC? You know exactly. So like the the San Fran one was made more sense to me than that rumor, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't sound like that one really had any credibility. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Like he has way less competition. That's basically what I'm getting at. Yeah, but 100 correct. You know. Yeah. It's a way easier schedule. Um, yeah. So. And warmer weather. <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. Warm weather, no state income tax. Like, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to stay put there. The Browns get to host Tom Brady and the Buccaneers this year. That's right. That's going to be real yeah. good. Yeah. That'll yeah. be interesting. Deshaun versus Brady, potentially. Or it, Brady versus Brissett. Yeah. Which, which which week we seen them? Don't know. Schedule hasn't been released yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they're just one of those teams we know we're going to go up against. Right. We don't, know, we don't know when yet. Right. Because we're AFC North is playing the AFC East and NFC South, and then since we finished in third place, we host the Chargers, and we are mm. going to visit Deshaun Watson's old team, the mm. Texans, and then for our seventeenth game. We get to visit FedEx Field and play the Washington Commanders. Really? <laughs> I'm going to end of the year in Washington. This will be an yeah. easy one, hopefully. Yep. <laughs> I have, in case you haven't figured it out, I have the entire list of opponents for the Browns memorized. Yeah. I mean, I like that matchup than going against Cincinnati the last game of the year. Yeah. yeah. Or any of the Ravens, Steelers, any. Well, yeah, I can it. already tell you. It's going to be a division game to end the season because that's just how the NFL is now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Got my fingers crossed. If I had to pre- – okay, I'll make a prediction right now. For our opening game of the season will be in Miami against the Dolphins. Mm. I think okay. week one we will be in Miami against the Dolphins. Tua and Tyreek, week one, we get the first look at them. Yes. That'll be I, interesting. I'll tell you this, and usually the league knows when suspense is going to get handed down. I wouldn't be surprised if we hadn't up playing the Texans one of the first two weeks. If the suspensions haven't been handed down at that time, that would be very fascinating to see how that plays out. But hmm. why I'm, I- I'm, I'm intrigued. Why do I have this weird feeling that the NFL is going to put Browns at Texans in prime time because it's Deshaun mm, Watson's you know return? Is. If you did. 
<laughs> you know they are. I don't know because it's going to be hard to promote without talking about all the stuff they don't want to talk about. You know. Yeah, that's uh, true. Maybe one that they go, yeah, let's keep this off of prime time so we don't have to run into those like you know problematic issues during the but broadcast. boss. They're like, but boss, that's going to be a rating. This we could get the ratings. Why can't we put it up? And gonna be like, yeah. Okay, yeah, there is money involved. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if they thought they could get eyeballs on it, they definitely would. But I don't think <laughs> that would demand yeah. many people's attention. In some other news, we found out where the 2024 NFL draft is going to be. Will, yep, it will be in the Motor City. Oh, man. Detroit, I'm Michigan. I'm at the head there. I'm Let's go. Out. I love that they're doing the draft in, like, different host cities now. Instead yeah. Of the same place here. I wish the NBA would do the same thing. Mm. NBA draft's not as exciting, though. That's know. true. It's mm-hmm. only two rounds. and yeah. Football is a parade. Even I, I got to take my hat out to the fans of Tennessee Titans. That was probably what was, was the biggest turnout that I've seen. It was, yeah, like, it was what, over 2 million or 3 million fans there. Mm, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think that these they're doing very well. The one in Cleveland went by all means very well, considering the pandemic was going on and everything else. Mm-hmm. Like in a normal year, we we probably would have had a similar crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the only reason that we were a little bit limited. So. Easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was actually at the dra- round one of the draft when it was here in Cleveland, but I my sister and her boyfriend didn't want to stay that long and. I was going to flying to Raleigh the next day, so I only stayed for the first three picks. See, I'm I'm a guy that I'm watching day two, day three. I'm and, and, and my family look at me like I'm a weirdo. Like, man, what is you watching round five for? And the draft um, a national holiday for I me. love the draft, man. That's Same. like must watch TV. From from the moment it starts till the moment it ends, like I am completely locked into the draft. Mm-hmm. Even to Mr. Irrelevant. Like I'm yeah. all the way in. It's hard for me on round three to watch the draft because a lot of it they don't even show like the two. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just up like up on the screen. right, like mm-hmm. you know, a commercial could be on, and it's like the selection is. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's like oh, you're you're not, and then they come back and they don't even talk about every player. It's like, but round three, that's where championships is won at. Yeah, like on some realness. That's those are the most, in my opinion. Of course, the round one is round one, but round three and round five, in between, those are when you pick those those hidden gems, diamonds in the rough. The oh Tom my Brady's gosh! Over there. Yeah, Tom Brady, number one ninety nine. Exactly, and he was That's in the right. sixth round. Mm-hmm. But that third round is the most important round of football. That's why a lot of these draft or these trades that happen um, is centered around getting a, a, a three. If you pay mm-hmm. close attention to it, there's always going to be a third pick or third round pick attached right. to it because of that. Yeah. yeah. The nice thing too is they're a lot cheaper in those rounds too. So you can get mm-hmm. these guys that, you know, you can keep for four or five years at a really decent price, you know? So it's, mm-hmm. there's so much value in those picks. I agree with you, Jason. Value picks. Yeah. You know what else is interesting though is like with comparing the NBA draft and NFL draft, when a trade happens on draft day for the NFL, the trade happens instantaneously. Like let's say Baltimore trades up from number 13, which I think is where they're actually drafting to number seven, they're on the clock instantly. Whereas with the NBA tra- draft, if the Timberwolves were to trade up from wherever they're picking to number five, the team who are, who originally had that pick is still on the clock. Mm-hmm. This is a lot of behind the scenes um, trying to stay in a gray area from tampering type ordeals with the NBA. But best believe if there's a trade that happens, those GMs already agreed, hey, if you're going to trade up, we want you to take this guy. Mm-hmm. And then once the draft is over, we'll go ahead and finalize the paperwork. But it's all types of collusion and backdoor meetings that go on in these drafts. And it's all centered around whatever the CBA is in their, in their respective league. So Yeah. 
I love the drafts because I'm a big college sports fan and I just love watching all the footage from, you know, it's like you're getting to see the best players do mm -hmm. their best plays. Like it's Change really cool. life. Yeah. It, it's cool to, to, to like recap the college football season during the draft. So I enjoy that part of it. It gives me a little taste of college football before, um, before fall. You go yeah. from being a college kid to being a millionaire in a matter of, of moments, man. And it's, 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 it's great TV to watch. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, speaking of college, we have the final four this weekend. And oh my God, could you have picked a better final four? Yeah, this is a good one. It's a lot, a lot of big hitters in this one. So wow. yeah, I mean the the Duke UNC matchup that's a dream, um, and then you got Kansas and Nova, you know, two powerhouses as well. Um, but yeah, my my Kansas Jayhawks coasted to the Final Four like I predicted. Um, I'm still riding with them. So I, I'm not I'm not gonna say they're my Duke because I'm an old state guy, but. Hey, Coach K, that swan song look like the fat lady. She's starting to warm up her vocals and get ready to sing because it's starting to look like it's going to be a magical finish for the Duke Blue Devils. So mm. I'm all in for it. I had to take a mulligan because I predict I originally predicted Arizona and they lost. But my new pick, Villanova, they look ready and primed to get another one. It might not they might not Kansas, man. They're such a good physical team, like and they're so well coached, you know. Yeah. And and that's the thing about that Nova team too, is like they've been there before, you know. And not that Kansas hasn't, but not as recently. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they haven't tasted that as recently. Like mm -hmm. it's been a while since, you know, Bill Self had any like real success beyond like, you know, Final Four. So it, it's it's a really interesting matchup. I'm definitely more worried about this one than any of the other ones to this point. All the mid majors, right? We they NCAA they always feed us the hope that hey anybody can win, even mm -hmm. St. Peter's, right? And what do we have in the final four? All of the blue bloods has now left, and one of them are going to win it. So you know it, it was it was interesting, man. But um, I will say that. As usual, NCAA, once it gets towards the Final Four, it neutralizes itself, and usually the Blue Bloods, um, it's going to win it. So, they're here yeah. we are. Can we just talk about the fact that, like, the ACC for the had, like, three teams standing in the Elite Eight. They had Duke, North Carolina, and Miami. And for some reason, North Carolina was an eight seed, and Miami was a 10 seed. Yeah. They yeah, didn't have a good season. Teams, so. North Carolina, they, 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 unlike the other previous North Carolina seasons, they, it wasn't really a good season for them. You know, they, um, they were winning some and they were going losing streaks, but um, we wasn't accustomed to seeing them come in as an eight seed. That's kind of, that's unheard of. But yeah, uh, QB Brown, this is a new, this is a new venture with, um, a new chapter, rather. Yeah. Sorry, so. But think about it. For the first time ever, we are getting Duke and North Carolina in March Madness. And it would have been nice, incredible to see them play in any round of March Madness. But we're getting them in the freaking Final Four. It's mm -hmm. cute. It's very cute. Um, it's, it's cute. cute? <laughs> That's the word you're going with? It's cute because, you know... I, Yes, it, it's 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 one of the best. I'm not gonna say it's the best, but it's one of the best um, um, rivalries in sports. But you know the way this is starting to ship out or starting to frame out, I could see Coach K beating UNC. UNC, yes, they had a good lead. They got a good lead against St. Peter's. But let's be frank: if St. Peter's would have had a hot start off like they had in the previous games. We might not be having this conversation. So mm -hmm. UNC, they, I think they are the product of an easy bracket to get to where they're at. But that's about to come to um, – everything's going to be put – all the chips are put on the table now because I think Duke has the best talents left out of all of the teams that's remaining. So we'll see, man. Yeah. But it's I'm, cute. 
is cute. Cute <laughs> is not the word I would have gone on. Gone yeah, with. Duke's, Duke opens up as four point favorites. Um, so yeah, they're definitely favorites to win this game. Um, UNC's made a really nice run. A lot of people thought they didn't belong in the tournament. Um, and Josh, to speak to your point earlier about the ACC, it's um, a, a lot of people look at them and, and say that they may have had a down year. And I think that really what the tournament showed is that it's just such a competitive division that those guys kind of beat themselves up a little bit because the Big Ten came into this thing with nine teams um, and we don't have any left. So, you know, and that was the conference that everybody was saying, oh, the Big Ten's the best conference this year. And, um, I don't know. It's just tournament time kind of revealed that to be a little bit untrue. You're right. Yeah. Um, I I cannot wait for Saturday night because you got, like I said, you have two fantastic games. So I'm going to find my favorite sit in my favorite spot on on my couch in my man cave. Grab a bottle of cheer wine, which is a cherry soda that they have down in North Carolina, um, and just enjoy it because yeah. It's so Whistle Peaks. Whistle Peaks. Oh, geez. Well, Villanova, Kansas. I'm going with Villanova. For Duke, North Carolina. Uh, I don't think Coach K's. This is gonna be Coach K's last game. I think Coach K gets to the national championship, and. But Jay Wright's going to outcoach him in the national championship. Coach K's not going to get that swan swan song that he he wants. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, I've always, when it comes to UNC Duke, I've always been a UNC guy. Um, and I, but unfortunately, I like Duke to win this game. Um, Josh, I think you're right. I think I think they're the more talented team. UNC's made a nice run, but. I just don't think that they match up well enough with this Duke team. Um, and then on the other side of things, Kansas was my pre-tournament pick, so I'm I'm going to stick with Kansas. But, man, I really like Nova, um, so I'm not really confident about that one. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Duke, Kansas in the final. Um, and I'm going to stick with my pick in Kansas winning it all. But, man, I, I it feels like they want Duke to win this thing so freaking bad, you know. Yeah. And it's like uh, I, everything in me is like they're gonna just rig this thing for Duke, you know what I mean? So the conspiracy theorist in me doesn't doesn't want to put any money on these games. I'll put it that way. Yeah, play safe. Yeah. yeah. If I was to tell you that um, my bracket, I picked three of the four teams that I picked are in the final four tournament. Probably no one would nice. believe me, but I got I had picked uh, Villanova and I picked Kansas. Um, and when my tournament, I said Kansas was going to win, but I test is telling me, I think Nova might be a little bit more physical ball club. Um, and they're more quicker when it comes down to those fast breaks. And I don't think Kansas does good when it comes to that transition, no defense, you know, they've had, uh, I'll say they're weird. They, they're, they're, they're the journey that they had to take wasn't that tough like Villanova's was. So I think the eye test is telling me Villanova might upset Kansas. And then um, I actually had Duke win it at all, so I'm going to stay true to that. Um, I think Duke is going to win. I think it's going to be a close game, um, but I could see Duke pulling away probably within like the last five minutes left in the second half. And um, definitely I could see Duke versus Nova, and then I could see, again, Coach K going off in that swan song. Yeah. So I'm looking right now on the ESPN app. Kansas is favored by four and a half against Nova. And then, like you said, Brian, Duke is favored by four against UNC. So you like that Nova pick? You like Nova getting the points? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. powers that be want Duke to win four thumbs down. Nice. 100% agree with that. Yeah, I think they'll get the points. If, if, if I was a better man, which I am, I would definitely take Nova to cover. Um, but I could see Kansas just oh, from a talent standpoint. Kansas got more talent. So if Kansas is able to take or resist those punches that it's going to get from Nova, then it could be a good night for the Jayhawks. But um, we'll, we just have to see. That's why they play the game. 
I could talk about the final four for another hour or so, but we're not going to do that because this show is only an hour. We're not going to go on for two hours. But I want to look more closely at the uh, Villanova, or I'm sorry, Duke, North Carolina game. As as Sanchez has saying, the powers that be, oh, okay. So what's interesting about the North Carolina Duke rivalry, which is one of my personal favorites, it's only a one sport rivalry. Like when you think of Duke, North Carolina, for me, I automatically think of college basketball. Are you guys the same way? Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. It, yes and no. Not, not really. I don't. Uh, their rivalry is more about proximity than anything, you know. Um, so it's it's a big thing in terms of like the way that it splits families. Um, that you know, some people go to Duke, some people go to UNC. Um, so no, I don't. I don't see it as just being basketball. Personally. So it's more of a local. Yeah, that that's okay. that's a rivalry that's born that. out of proximity. You know, it's the tobacco road rivalry. It's a it's about more than just basketball. I can believe that. Okay. But, but mm-hmm. uh, go ahead, Jay. No, no, you go ahead. You could see. Um, the reason I bring that up is like a lot of these great rivalries that we think of, I feel like, for example, Brian, you can speak more to this because you're a Michigan man, but would you say Michigan, Ohio State is like more of a football rivalry than any other sport between the two? Or would you say it's every- yeah, I mean football's the biggest it's it's the famous one, but but I don't agree with the fact that it's the only time that OSU and Michigan's a rivalry. I just don't see it that way. Like it's it's always a rivalry in any sport. Um so yeah, I just I don't see it that way at all. I, okay. You know, just to add on to that, I, I could see why you would say that because uh, in the production meeting, Josh, we was talking about this, and I was saying it's just football. But when you just have a Michigan guy in general and an Ohio State guy, it's a rivalry in life, right? <laughs> so it's always gonna it's gonna always create a debate. Um, mm-hmm. Which the only way you create debates is if you have a powerful influence on the audience and. Like you said, Ohio State, Michigan, f- for one, football is more – football is, is, is bigger sport, of course, than basketball. It gets more ratings. Uh, but for two, um, it's, 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 it, it has a longer tradition, I would believe, than the North Carolina um, Duke rivalry. Um, Much older, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's – it's, I'm with you. I, I would think that Ohio State, Michigan is probably in my and not just being a, a bias to it. I just think that there's a better rivalry. I think Auburn and Alabama. I think that's a better rivalry than Duke in North Carolina. Would you say I, Alabama Auburn is a one sport rivalry, or do you feel the same sentiment that it's a rivalry no matter what? I don't believe in one sport rivalries. Uh, I think that. <laughs> the pe- people who think one sport rivalries are a thing are people who didn't go to the schools. That's my own. Yeah, I, I don't know anyone personally who went to Michigan or went to Ohio State who would say that OSU Michigan's not a rivalry on the ice or it's not a rivalry in basketball. It's just a crazy thing to say, in my opinion. Okay. I, yeah, it's it's a huge rivalry. It doesn't matter when, where. It doesn't matter if it's a blood drive or if it's intramural <laughs> kickball. It doesn't matter. It's it's a rivalry. It's huge. Mm-hmm. Even on the grill. <laughs> yeah, so the perception from the outside looking in might be, oh, well, football is the only thing that matters. But the other reason that a lot of people in Ohio think football is the only part of the rivalry that matters is because it's the only part of the rivalry they dominate. Fair. Even yes. though, doesn't Michigan have the most wins all time in NCAA history? Yeah, but it, yeah, I mean, we, we don't need to go into all that, but yeah, that's that's what I mean, though. It's it's not just football, you know. It's just it's life. Ohio State, <laughs> uh, so that's what they cling to. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like, I, but I, students at Ohio State and students at Michigan see things differently than than you know the casual observer does. Even like, take it back to the Michigan when the Fab Five days, right? Fab Five was 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 great and phenomenal, and we had uh, Ohio State. We had a great team. We had Jimmy Jackson and them, 
but we couldn't get over the hump of Michigan because of the Fab Five era. So uh, it extended not only from the football field, but also to the basketball court. And Mm -hmm. um, even the hockey, you know, um, Michigan and Ohio State, they have two of the best programs when it comes to hockey on on the college platform. So it extends. It it goes deep, man. It's life. It's a life rivalry. Okay, fair enough. So, like I said, I am extremely pumped for this game because I love the Duke-North Carolina rivalry. Um, I just love rivalries in general, though. I think they that they, they are what makes sports really exciting to watch. Yeah, it adds a different element to the game that's not there when it's you know when it's not a rivalry. It, right. It, it changes the atmosphere. It changes the energy of the game. Um, and oftentimes it can change the outcome. You know, some people are cut out for rivalry games. So, yeah. you, know, you, you learn a lot about players when it comes time to play their biggest rivals. So that's my favorite part of the rivalries is like you really learn who's who during those games when it matters the most. Yeah. So we yeah. talked about this on the show a couple weeks ago that we think I think we all agree Nets 76ers is like a new up and coming rivalry. I personally think Nets Celtics is also becoming a bit of a rivalry because of the whole Kyrie thing and how Boston doesn't like him and how he treated the Celtics during his time, but whatever. Um, But it feels like we're missing like the next great rivalry still. Like, doesn't it? Like the Lakers versus Celtics. Yeah. Like the Lakers versus Celtics rivalry for me has died down a little bit it doesn't have for me personally anyway it doesn't quite have that same punch to it that it did when kobe and paul pierce and kevin garnett were playing in like the early 2000s finals and stuff so it's like i i want that next not necessarily like bulls pistons like physical punch you in the face type rivalry but it just feels like we're missing that element. It was getting real, t- you know. I had a chance to check out the Miami Heat versus the Boston Celtic game. I could say that it's, it's starting to heat up. Um, it was getting real chippy. Um, it was a lot of hard fouls, and we're not even in the playoffs yet. And of course, we could all assume they'll probably be one of the final four teams in the Eastern Conference left when it's all said and done. And it seemed like that's a rivalry that's starting to heat up. Um, of course, you've got the Miami, I mean, the Miami, Milwaukee Bucks. They're not going anywhere at all. Um, whoever they play against, it usually is physical. Uh, and then, hey, <coughs> I'm starting to see the Raptors and the Cavs. I'm starting not to like those guys. And, <laughs> and I'm starting to have an emotion watching it now. And it's like, you know, that which is good. But I didn't have that emotion since we went against the Warriors. So um, it's slow. You know, it's, it's not like how it used to be. Rivalries is the same. Uh, but it's starting to pick up some momentum for sure. I like what Brian said. Yeah, I like Bring that. The face punch rivalries. Those are the best. <laughs> rivalries. Any rivalries that involve violence are great. <laughs> right. I present to you Colby Covington versus Jorge Masidal. Yeah, there's there's a very one sided rivalry, but that's a good one that's recent. Um, yeah, yeah. I, gosh, I let it known be known how I felt about Masvidal last week, so yes, I'll, spare, I'll spare him this week. That's passionate too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but speaking of the NBA, it feels like the season, the this season anyway, the Cavs are one of the most snake bit teams because I. Did they overachieve at certain points in the season? Absolutely. I'm not afraid to admit that. When they got up to third place in the Eastern Conference, I knew that wasn't going to stay because, like, Milwaukee was going to be there, Boston, Philadelphia, Miami. I knew that. But, like, there was – we were hanging right around that four to six range, and then Jared Allen gets injured. Lowry Marketing gets injured. Rajon Rondo gets injured. Now Evan Mobley's injured. Everybody's in street clothes. And 
you hate to see it, man, because we, it was so much um, optimism. Yeah, to look there forward was so to. much promise. And mm-hmm. now I'm like, man, it, I didn't got to the point, and I'm not sure if you guys feel the same way, but I'm looking at the the standards, and I'm like, okay, well, at least we are uh, seven and a half games um, above the Hawks or someone in the play-in, so hopefully we can coast it out and get into the play-in now, but you no, know, it's, 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 I guess it's part of growing to become an elite team. Yeah. And yeah, we're snake bit, man. There's it's, it's no way around it. Yeah. Yeah, I, they've had awful luck this year. Um, but the, the year has been a tremendous success and overachievement in spite of all of that. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, there was some hope that, like, hey, this is actually a really good team. Maybe we can make a little bit of a run. Um, and I think that that hope is kind of now dissipated now that all of the injuries and we see them, you know, kind of falling into that play in tournament range. And it, it seems more than likely that's probably where they're going to end up is in that seven to 10 range, unfortunately. So yeah. We try hard. We try hard. That's the thing. Before we wasn't trying hard and we was like rot- routing teams by like 10, 15. Now we're trying hard and we can boat race by, <laughs> by the Mavericks yesterday. <laughs> like, we tried and it still wasn't good enough. And it's right. Like, yeah, no, it, that's a good point. It, there's a lot of heart in this team. You know, they, they easily could have rolled over and, and just kind of gave up yesterday, and they didn't, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot of fight in that young team. that They believe in themselves now, which I think is a huge thing going into next year. But, yeah, it's snake bitten is the right word, Josh. Like, it's this season was kind of derailed, and none of it was of our own doing, you know. It, yeah. was, it was all just bad luck, you know. We've, yeah. And as there's I no look, shoot yourself in the foot moment by the Cavs or anything like that. You know what right. I mean? Like you can't put your finger on a moment where this thing turned. It's just the injuries. That's when it turned, you know? So, Right. When I look at the standings, we've already clinched a play-in tournament. So oh, we, we did? Have, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we clinched that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, we would be – if the season ended today, which I know it doesn't, but if it did, we would be hosting Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets. Right. So we would be <laughs> losing that game and then playing Atlanta or Charlotte. Correct. Yeah. Which we could that's hope with those the Atlanta and Charlotte game. But right, yeah, right. Let's be real. Coincidentally, <laughs> we, we play the Hawks tonight. So it'll Coming be off the back, this is a bad night. I I don't know. I just don't like this matchup tonight. I, I no. think Trey Young Hawks always tear our throats out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't We've like got it. the Hawks, the Sixers, the Bucks, the Clippers. Or, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Hawks. Sorry. The Knicks. Hawks and then the Knicks. And then the Sixers. And then the – okay, so I had it sort of right. Where so we happen? might lose three out of the next five. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, we have Hawks. <laughs> Let me double check. Hawks, Knicks, Sixers, Magic, Nets, Bucks. So the Magic is the only easy game in, in the, for the We rest. almost lost to them. Yeah, the Knicks, Knicks stink. We can win yeah. that game. But, uh, yeah, we got the Sixers, the Nets, and the Bucks who are all fighting for positions. So it's going to be a grueling last six games of the season for the Cavs. We might be able to win that last game of the season against Milwaukee because my guess is they will have wrapped up their yeah, play- yeah. playoff so people. So they'll probably rest Giannis and Middleton and Drew Holiday. Although we do match up good against them because they we had their full roster and we still was too much. When we're healthy. Yeah, when we're healthy, we match up well against them. <laughs> Not yeah. right now, though. We in the off season, we gotta find a wing player because the Karis Levert trade has not worked out the way I thought. I think the Cavs thought it would, and well, he's been hurt. He had a great game last night. Yeah, he had over thirty. Yeah, he had over thirty points last night. He, mm. He's been hurt. He hasn't. You know, he's just finally getting healthy. So, and he's still new. He's still right. trying to adapt to the team. So. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not out on Karis Levert. I still think that that was a really good move. Mm-hmm. I'm not fully out on him, but for me, I'm like not quite as excited about the acquisition now as I was when we first made the trade for him. I'll say it like that. It's only been a couple of weeks. I mean, 
You know, you're, you're right off a guy after a couple weeks with the team. Win I mean, who, who Josh in win now mode. <laughs> he, he, he was injured. He was, first of all, he was injured. So aye, he aye, aye. Play when he first got here. The kids played like three games. <laughs> they're like, yeah, he's, he's no good. He's what have you done for me lately? <laughs> <laughs> That's Lord, part of it. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> He scored 32 points last night. That's what he's done for you lately. Good point. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. It feel like it's a therapy. Th- it feel like it's a therapy Thursday session coming up. I mean, yeah, he 11 for 19 last night, seven for eight from the foul line. He had a great night. Yeah, but st- overall, I still want us to get like a wing, another wing player because. I just don't like the three big guys in the starting lineup. It feels like at Lowry Markinen's the odd man out for me. Well, yeah, he stinks. Yeah. Well, got he, shouldn't be starting. he shouldn't be, he should not be starting on this team. And that's, no. I mean, when we need Jared Allen back, once we have Jared Allen back and we have Mobley back and we have Levert playing with Garland and, Sexton and you know these other guys that are coming back, like we'll be fully loaded. Come on, you think yeah, we're gonna put that when Sexton? Gets ju- I'm saying save your judgment until you see those guys on the court together next year. Okay, but you do you think? Are you saying that there's a chance Sexton could be in the starting lineup? No, nah, I mean there's a chance. Yes, there's a chance. No, I hope not personally. I'm just saying, you know, these are the guys that are hurt right now that he's not played with. Right. That's I get the only that. point I was making. You- Fair enough. Yeah, I would like to see Sexton come off the bench because I'd like to see him come off the team personally. I just, <laughs> oh, that's that's tough. Tough. Yeah, well, he's that good. Uh, I think that, come off the bench. Uh, I would trade him for Josh. You're talking about it. We need depth at that wing position. I would be happily trade him for a wing. That is a chip. Yeah, it's a trading chip for sure. Because mm-hmm. here's here's my biggest issue with Colin Sexton. When when he's out there. I feel like I'm watching James Harden when he was with the Houston Rockets. Cause it's oh, just- Deion Waiters. Is yeah, that- Deion Waiters. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a fair comparison. Mm-hmm. I, I mean. He was on a really bad team, and he just took a bunch of shots. And, and so he obviously his numbers were a little inflated because he was the only one that was scoring the ball. Um, uh, I just think that the way that this team has come together without, without him on the court or – even on the bench for that matter, um, has shown that he wasn't as important of a piece as we may have thought he was, in my opinion. I think that's a fair assessment. Well, I, we have about eight, about eight minutes. Yeah, we have eight minutes. You want to do some therapy Thursday? Yeah. Go for it. Whoever's ready, go. Josh, you should go first. Yeah, I, <laughs> I probably should because I just realized the other day that when we did this the first time, only you two guys went. For some reason, I didn't. Yeah, you weren't prepared. Big <laughs> Floor is yours. Okay. I guess I'll go with this. That Cleveland doesn't get enough combat sports events. Because we've shown... I, I know Jake Paul was in the main event, and he's from Cleveland. And I know when the UFC was here, Stipe was in the main event, and he's from Cleveland. But still... I think the city of Cleveland has shown that we love combat sports. And yet, for some reason, Dana White doesn't want to bring the octagon back here for whatever reason. And, well, boxing so, like, misjumbled and all that, that I would lose track of which boxing pay-per-view is coming here anyway. But still, I want, like, a big UFC fight night or some UFC pay-per-view. doesn't have to be headlined by a Cleveland guy, but I would love to see the UFC come back to Cleveland. They were just in Columbus last week. So why not? We've had this conversation a million times, so I'm not going to get into a debate with you over it again, but there's there's a reason they don't come. There's multiple reasons they don't come to Cleveland. Multiple reasons. You have to remember too, that these are sanctioned events too. You know, like they have to be sanctioned by, by boards and it's all about money and there's no reason to bring an event to Cleveland unless there's a guy like Steve on the card because there's all right. 
I so got there's my therapy Thursday. Is that Josh? Oh, that was your. <laughs> 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 well, I, my therapy Thursday is I'm gonna take a different approach. It's non sports related. Uh, but oh, I know what you're doing. <laughs> no, police, that. um, police that have the radar guns that sit on heels. Okay, first of all, not only is that morally wrong, unethically wrong, but it's taxpayer wrong. Like, well, there's no type of skill a cop would need to give a speeding ticket to someone that's coming down a hill. And they sit in these, uh, like they're in the, uh, right behind the woods and trees and want to hide. The weather's not good. And you still want to give tickets to people that's just trying to make a living, trying to get to work, whatever the case may be. But you think it's, um, it, it, it makes taxpayer sense, <laughs> no pun intended, to give tickets and uh, try to get someone on the radar. And you know they can't go at the normal speed. So it, that bothers me. That, 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 that grinds my gears. I think that there should be an input to all of that across the board. I think Joe Biden needs to really look into that. Um, there's no place for it. And I, I know I can't be the only person that feels this way. But earn your money. Let's get rid of the cameras, the, the cameras on the, on the street cameras. Do your job. Like, like Bill Belichick said, do your job. Protect and serve, right? <laughs> I think that's your point, right? Protect and serve, right? Protect like, and that's, serve, man. Yeah, like quit wasting time with all this petty pettiness. It's unfortunate. I got you. I, I feel you on that one. Yeah, yeah. I Quit trying to be sneaky and trying to trick people into tickets. It's like protect. Like if you want to pull someone over because they're going too fast and they're driving oh, dangerously, yeah. do that. You do that. It's my but, but if you're hiding behind a tree to try to get somebody who's posting <laughs> on a hill, on a hill, a little too fast, and then you, you know, pull out behind. And yeah, that's petty. Like, that's so, cheap. Right, right. Um, no, but Josh, I. I'm with you. I would love to see a combat sports event come to Cleveland. So your point wasn't bad. You were making a good point. Your point was that we want them here and that people exactly would go. we want. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. So that's not a bad point. I just wanted to say that um, there are plenty of reasons why they don't. Is all I'm saying. Which but yeah, I, I also would love to have more combat sports in Cleveland. And there's too. been some big events here in the past too. Like heavyweight boxing used to be huge in Cleveland, like in mm -hmm. the early 20th century, and. So, yeah, there's a long history of combat sports in the Cleveland area that deserves to get more events than we do. Um, so, yeah, I, we need to build I, a dome. I somehow, somehow it changes financially and there becomes more motivation. To build yeah. a dome. I understand why they don't. We don't need to go into those reasons. It just bothers me that, like, there's we want it. You can see it, but. Yeah, it, you got to. The, the only thing is, like, UFC is not like a touring thing like WWE in the same way because their fights all have to be sanctioned. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to go in front of these different governing boards. So it's like to have an event somewhere, you really have to make it worth it for them to go through all those hoops and jump. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's real easy for them to just say, we'll do it here in Vegas. We've been doing it. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy for them to just. Right. Yeah, like, we, we need to increase the incentive for them to come to places like Cleveland somehow. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe that's something we can co cook up with, Josh. Come up with some kind of idea to, like, incentivize, like, main events to be hosted in, in smaller, like, smaller cities or whatever, in Midwestern areas or whatever. Yeah. It would, it, would grow, it would grow the brand for sure, you know. Yeah, I may adjust them be at the end of the long run, but in the short run is the problem. You know, they, they're so narrowly focused on the short run, you know, the money right now that they can't really think long term like that. Right. I get it. Yeah. There, there's got to be an answer to get them to come places like Yeah. Because, like, I, I know WWE is different, but they do – they get good crowds when they come here. I, yeah, the issue is not that we won't show up. For sure. Cleveland will show up to a combat sports event. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep. The interest is definitely there. Yeah, um, for sure. Which makes me kind of want, like, I, I feel like this would be a good area for some kind of, like, amateur production. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like, not like UFC, but like a, 
like a minor league for the UFC. You know what I mean? Like an yeah. like Ohio fight league or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like that. Something that could kind of make it like, oh, well, you know, now Cleveland, Ohio is where we're, we're breeding athletes to mm-hmm. like come compete in Vegas and, and, you know, helping them prepare to go there. Mm-hmm. So why don't you return the favor and, you know, come here? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So we got about less than a minute. Brian, the Penguins are playing the Minnesota Wild tonight. What do you think? You like their chances? Uh, the Wild are a good team. Um, I always like the Penguins' chances, though, because the best hockey team of all time and have the best hockey player of all time. There you go, right there. Steve Crosby, he's still playing, right? Number eighty-seven. He's. I thought playing. you were about to say Mario Lemieux. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Does Sidney Crosby still play? Does Jake Gensel still play? Does Evgeny Malkin still play? Yes. Okay, then I like our chances. Okay. <laughs> So, so you're predicting the Penguins to win? Um, the Wild are favorites tonight. They're they're slight favorites, but um, I like the Penguins in the upset on the road. Yeah. Okay. And then right now they would be matched up with the New York Rangers if the Stanley Cup playoffs started mm, today. I do not like that matchup. I I, I do it's not tough. like that matchup for it's us. Tough. Um, not because the Rangers are that good. Um. I just we we have a lot of issues li- uh, lining up with the Rangers. matchup side. They, yeah, they've given us fits um, and gotten the better of us the last two times that we played them. Um, so yeah, I, I really want to avoid that matchup. So I think a big win tonight, in Minnesota, try to get some more points before the end of the season. Um, if they can a- a- avoid playing the Rangers, that would be huge for us. Right now, the Penguins are three points behind the Rangers for second place in the division. Yeah. So. Keep chipping away. We've got a, a, a few games left on the year. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Uh, I think that this is a really good Penguins team, though. Yeah. I'm excited for the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. I think they are going to be super fun. I was not so excited about the playoffs last year just because I the Penguins weren't that great last year. Like, let's be honest. They had a really no. bad year. Um, but, yeah, this team, after the moves that they've made um, – yeah, I, I think that we're in a good position and that we might get to see Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin lift one more cup. Yeah. Um, I have a Therapy Thursday about hockey in Cleveland, but we can save that for another episode. <laughs> cool. Now you got we've got uh, material for next week already. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Sports Journals. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. If you are watching WrestleMania, enjoy it. If you are watching the Final Four, enjoy it. I know I'm going to. Um, You guys got anything else? Uh, Yeah, punch your rivals in the face. (laughs) Cops, do your job. Get off the heels. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the Sports General's YouTube channel. Subscribe to Unger to the Max. Subscribe to Brian Fraley. And subscribe to Manalytics as usual. Thank you for tuning in. If you are listening to us on Anchor or Spotify, make sure you subscribe. And leave a comment. Tell us yes. what you thought. Tell us what you thought. We'd love to have an argument in the chat after the, after the Yes. Chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment. Punch that like button like a UFC fighter. That's a little homage to my YouTube channel. <laughs> nice. But we will see you next time. Good night, Canada. Eat your vegetables and be strong. <laughs> you guys. <laughs>